Hello again and welcome back to Investing with Wesley. You know, I feel like I kind of owe you, the viewer, an apology because I've made numerous videos explaining to you to just keep investing, to cut back where you can cut back without living on, you know, rice and beans and continue to dollar cost average into your investments and buy when they're low and also buy when they're high and just keep dollar cost averaging. And in one hand, that is a great piece of advice but on the other hand, it's only partial advice. In today's episode, I wanna make things right and I wanna to explain to you the other half of that advice so that you're better prepared for upcoming market turns as well as upcoming recessions and depressions. Let's get into it. Okay, so for starters, I haven't just said keep buying any and every investment. What I have been saying is diversify your portfolio and then keep vesting. If you were to invest in the entire S&P 500, that is partially diversified in and of itself because it contains 500 different companies. But this is where the half bit of advice kicks in. Diversifying only eliminates market risk, not systemic risk. So if you were to go all in on Apple and Apple fails, then you just lost all of your money because that is market risk, which is why we diversify in the first place. We'll go in on Apple, Amazon, Verizon, you name it. We'll invest in a bunch of different companies because if one fails, well, we have the other ones to kind of prop it up and mitigate our losses. And that's the whole point you want to invest into the S&P 500 index as a whole because if any one of those 500 companies goes belly up, you're still protected and you're not going to see extreme losses. Diversification only helps market risk. And market risk, just like I've described it to you, is the risk of financial loss in an investment due to price fluctuations or you know prices of things going down. But what's systemic risk and why doesn't diversification protect you from that? Well, systemic risk is the risk of breakdown of the entire system as opposed to just one individual market in the system. Whereas a market risk is one individual stock going belly up, systemic risk is the entire system as a whole going belly up. This is what happens when you think of recessions, depressions, major economic downturns, financial crises, and even currency crises. When these things happen, the entire system is at risk as a whole. Just remember to yourself, if you're buying what everyone else is buying, then when the markets take a downturn, you'll also be trying to sell what everyone else is trying to sell as well. So you're buying the S&P 500 as a whole with everyone else, other retail traders, businesses, pension funds, you name it. Everyone's buying the S&P 500 either as a whole or individually, and that's causing the prices to go up. But everyone's doing that. So when something major happens, like fighting inflation, and the stock market starts to go down as a whole, that's because you and everyone else are trying to sell what no one else is buying. So there's a liquidity crisis in that. If everyone's selling and no one's buying, then no one's going to be successful with their sell and prices are just going to continue to fall. Now, I also don't want to give you the false advice of always being a contrarian and always betting against what everyone else is doing because while everyone else is buying the stock market and experiencing a massive bull run, if you're shorting the stock market the entire time it's rallying, then you're just going to have extreme losses. So this is where you need to properly diversify or diversify outside of the system that you're in. And that is the whole piece of advice instead of just the half of keep buying into the S&P 500. What you should be doing is trying to diversify out into different systems. Buy some stocks in the S&P 500 or any US market indice, buy some overseas, buy some in China, buy some in Europe, buy things that aren't necessarily stocks, buy gold, precious metals, other commodities, buy things in a complete roundabout portfolio to include real estate, even Bitcoin. That way, if one system collapse, you're not at risk. If you look at the spot price of gold in comparison to the S&P 500, you'll see that the S&P 500 and the stock market as a whole has just totally annihilated gold prices. But if you zoom all the way in to recessions and to when these downturns occur, you'll see that as the stock market's contracting and going down, gold prices often are going up. 
So the savvy investor who's also fully diversified could be selling some of their gold at all time highs and buying into the stock market at all time lows and rebalancing their portfolio, so to speak. That way you're always selling at high and buying at lows. But also being fully diversified comes with a catch. Sure, you can protect yourself from market risk and systemic risk at that point, but you're also limiting the amount of gains that you could be receiving on any one investment. If you have 25% of your portfolio into the US stock market and we experience a massive rally, well, you're only gonna experience a fraction of that across your entire portfolio because other investment values such as gold or precious metals might not be doing so good. So whereas the stock market in general could experience a rally of 30 or 40 percent you're only going to see a rally of maybe five to eight percent because everything else that you have in your fully diversified portfolio isn't keeping up now i also don't want that to come across as not fully diversified and to be discouraging because it is way more important to limit losses than to capture gains there's a chart that we'll put up on screen but basically it shows the amount of gain that you need to overcome the previous losses. So as an example, if you lose 5%, you only need a gain of 5%. But if you lose 30%, you'll need a gain of 43% just to break even. And as the losses get greater and greater, so does the gain needed to break even. Think about Netflix as an example. Over a one year time period, they've lost 57%. Now, just for easy let's round up to 60%. That means you would need a gain of 150% just to break even to counter the amount of losses that you've received on 60%. And as the losses get greater and greater, so does the gain needed to break even. Now that's a lot harder to do of get those high gains when it's also really easy to protect yourself on the downside. Remember, even if you did fully diversify and only a chunk of your portfolio was in the S&P 500 as a whole, and only that chunk saw a 5% gain, well remember, you're limiting your losses totally. So that 5% gain could put you ahead somebody else who didn't limit their losses and they're still working back from a 30% loss. So there it is, that is the full bit of advice. I want you to diversify and I do want you to keep investing and dollar cost averaging because those two things are the easiest way to build lasting generational wealth over time. But where I don't want you to get trapped is to just diversify into one system because if that system fails, so does your portfolio. Diversify fully into multiple different systems different asset classes all across the globe, and you should be more than protected for any system collapse and any market risk scenario. I hope you got value in this video. If you did, please remember to like and subscribe it really helps this channel get out there. I have a dedicated Facebook and Instagram account. Feel free to message me there if you have any questions, comments, or just want something addressed. Either way though, the choice is yours, and I'll see you in the next episode.